please welcome Juliana Hempel and Dr. Rita Castile. Thank you, John. Dear sailing friends, ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege for Juliane Hempel and me to talk to you about a newly born classic eight meter yacht named Starling Burgess. Let me tell you first something about an eight meter second rule racing yacht Juliane had been sailing on. It was a purely female crew consisting of screeching women. <laughs> they nearly won the eight meter European championship in Travemünde 1998, winning the second place. Later, after I, have, I had met and known Juliane, she often talked about this boat. It sounded to me to be a very special boat since this female crew thrown together by chance seemingly had no difficulties finishing near the top. In other words, it must have been a very fast boat. <laughs> the boat's name was Vyvern. In 1998, I bought my first eight meter racing yacht, Ayana, a third rule boat built after the war in 1946 and designed by Francois Camat. We raced Ayana for quite some time, but somehow I was intrigued by Juliana's report about this second rule, eight meter yacht named Vyvern, designed by an individual named Starling Burgess in 1928. Being not overly successful with Ayana, I finally purchased this boat, Wyvern, in 2004. It was quite expensive and in a miserable condition. My friend, the boat wharf owner, Josef Martin, took the boat into an extensive cure. The boat wharf is in Radolf Zell, Lake Constance. Joseph Martin is well known for his impeccable workmanship and quality on wooden boats. After this refit, we took Vyvern to the 8 meter world championship into the Mediterranean here in 2009. I was on the helm. We easily won the tune-up races. Vyvern showing all her talents. But when the real regatta started, a strong wind came up together with a choppy sea. We finished in the medium ranks only. The explanation for this, not only am I a lousy sailor, but Vyvern turned out to be a girl with an ample bosom. She had difficulties to go fast through choppy waters. At the same meter world championship in Geneva 2015, Vyvern won the Sierra Cup, being the fastest of all classical eight meter yachts. Vyvern enjoyed low winds and a fairly flat water. Two years later, during the eight meter world championship in Hanke, we had a strong wind and a choppy sea. I now knew that Wyvern would not go too fast under those conditions. This was the inspiration point for me to talk about an eight meter yacht sailing fast also in choppy waters. So I commissioned Juliane Hempel to make comparison calculations of the performance abilities of eight meter boats known to be fast on the water. On my search for a fast classic eight meter, the historical study drove me to research and compare the known properties and shapes. However difficult it is, I try to stay away from emotions and focus on numbers. And so I select a number of eight meter designs 
draw their lines in 3D, calculated the weight distribution, the center of gravity, and then entered all data generated in VP. Here you can see, for example, the comparing water lines, talking about Vivan and the yeah, problems in choppy seas. I used a program for 12 meter yachts developed in the time they were used for the America's Cup. This VPP has proven to be robust and reliable for type similar heavy displacement boats. VPP numbers as absolute numbers in light or heavy conditions are critical, but this VPP program is very good comparing difficult, uh, different several similar yachts. The outcome was very clear. The design Iskarin by Olin Stevens came out on top under almost all conditions. This yacht still exists sailing on the Lake Ontario and building her was not an option for this project. This triggered an idea with our friend David Viera. He reminded John Lamatz van Buren of a design published in No Ordinary Being, the biography of Stalling Burgess. It was a preliminary design for an eight meter to be built in aluminium, which Lloyds at the time did not permit. And so she was never built. This design was made in 1937, the time that Orlin Stephen and Starling Burgess worked together on the J Glass Ranger. John contacted the Mystic Seaport Museum and Rüdiger was able to obtain the rights to build this eight meter to the original lines. More about later, please. Please keep in mind that Starling Burgess was an outstanding naval architect, designing the fastest boats in the 1930s. At last, the famous J-boat Ranger, who didn't meet a similarly fast competitor during the America's Cup races. Starling Burgess was not only an outstanding naval architect and highly experienced, he was quite a character, a head-standing genius, as you can see here uh, on this illustration, known for always having two cigarettes in his mouth since he was willing to smoke continuously. As you can also read here, he arrived in the boat yards in a stripped down lancha with a trained seal sitting next to him in the front seat. While he worked, the seal sported the harbor around the hulls of Birch's remarkable creations. The reason for favoring the design of Starling Birch's and not that of Olin Stevens was twofold. First of all, this boat never was built before. Secondly, after all the positive results, we reached with Wyvern, who had been designed about 10 years earlier, there was a good chance to get a very fast third rule eight meter yacht when realizing Starling Birch's younger design. By the way, looking at the 12 meter racing yachts, a similar performance can be seen as with the eight meter yachts. As a co-owner of the 12 meter yacht Anitra, a second rule yacht designed by Starling Burgess and built in 1928, we made a comparable experience in gentle winds. The Starling Burgess design can be as equally fast as 12 meter boats, 10 years younger under those comparable conditions. Please. Like we see before, it exists only the lines the sail plan and the general arrangement in aluminium without any cabin. The eight meter rules prescribes a cabin with a minimum high and area. The wish of Rüdiger and his friend, the excellent boat builder Josef Martin, was to build these wonderful eight meter lines of Starling Birches in composite according to the Lloyd rules of meter yachts. Here you can see my redesign of the lines of this boat. 
for better results and reducing costs, Josef Martin wants all planks and frames in 3D, like we did the first time for the Gustav Eslander Scary Cruiser. That means I had to design the plank picture. That's not so trivial. The planks have to look nice. I always say they have to laugh and nicely taper to the ends. They cannot to be high there because of the shape. With the planks, I could design the rabbit in 3D. Here you can see the completely. And next picture, with the one-to-one -one templates, the boat builder could start with this. Next step would to be built the steel frames because it is a composite boat. Steel frames means first the frame contour of the hull. For that I did one-to-one -one templates and the metal worker can be bent the contour of the Nero profiles. Here you can see the machine for that. But the real chance is the always changing bevel angle in one frame. The bevel angle must be always 90 or more than 90 degrees. This needs a frame change round about in the middle of the yacht. For that, I have to design all frames in 3D together with a table of the angles in a definite distance. With that table, the metal builder can realize the exact angle on every position. For every angle, he had a small template. What you can see here in this spot, what's happened? Ah, here, sorry, excuse me. You can see it here in the picture. He has this small triangle in his left hand. After that, both frame sides were connected with a CNC machine floor. Here you can see the, the drawing of them with a, flu, a few frames with their floors. And now the best. Because of the planks in 3D, we can thrill all holes for the frames in an exact distance to top side and down side of the plank. And later, the boat builder will have the exact height of the plank on that position and the tapering of all planks. With these metal frames and the blind stringers, the boat builder can realize the whole shape for gluing the wooden frames. Two wooden frames between every steel frame. You heard it was a composite boat. These wooden frames are out of acacia and the unwinding of every frame I did in 3D and as one-to-one -one templates again. Here you see the result, all frames and blind stringers. Now they could start with planking. But the time was running away and Rüdiger had the dream to sail with this wonderful 8-meter yacht in near future. That was the reason for a brilliant idea of Josef Martin. Why we don't build the complete deck in the same time beside the hull. He did a lot of brainstorming and came out with exact vision for the preparing of the substructure of the deck to me. The most important thing was that later the deck beams will fit exactly in the beam shelf of the hull. Starting with that special substructure in exact orientation with a substitute beam shelf. Next step, deck beams and stringers. Because of the rule for the deck scantlings, a normal plywood teak deck would be heavy and really don't want teak. For the rule, you need 22 millimeters at deck thickness and a minimum weight like a traditional pitch pine deck. We decided us for a thin sapelli plywood and then western red cedar stripes with a thin glass fiber cover and instead of a teak deck, we took an Oregon king planking deck. Here you see the three millimeter plywood and the western cedar stripes while gluing. They were pressing with a vacuum. While building the deck, the crew is planking and planking <laughs> and planking. <laughs> Back to the deck. Next step for the deck building process. Here you can see, wait, sorry. Here you can see the king planking deck with the Oregon pine stripes. But that means also a new cabin design. 
Rüdiger said he wants a wonderful cabin with minimum area and all sides have to be rounded. Not these box cabins with a flat cabin floor. Oof. I did my very best. But the poor boat builder, this special outline needs a lot of craftsmanship of the yard and a lot of brainstorming. You see in the faces what they are thinking about it. <laughs> and you must know, all gun gunwale planks here will get a rounding too. Okay, that means the cabin would be molded with seven layers like a small boat. Here you see the first several diagonal layers. And for the last layer, you need a steam engine with a steam box and hot steam. Then the cabin side layers go into the box and in the right moment, out and running. <laughs> and gluing in the right position. Each plank on each side. And while the cabin was built, the other boat builders fitted the last plank in the hull. All planks on, ready for marriage with the deck. Now, the deck have ho. Here you can see the final vanished deck with all deck beams and all reinforcements for the fittings. So it's completely ready under deck. Now the hull is driving under the deck. Exact under the deck, it looks not so bad. I'm, also <laughs> I'm like this. And the magic moment. And all is perfect. Then it went in big steps to the launching. First the painting work, here you see the senior chef was looking with critical eyes what his son and the boat builder crew has done. Next important step, ballast keel and rudder. I must, give, must be forward because the time is running away. The measurer, Mr. Guy Roland from Geneva, was several times there and checked the scantlings and measuring points like, for example, the girth measurement. Inside, she was ready. And here I want to show you the wonderful pictures of James Robinson Taylor, and you don't need any comments. And we have a special thing under the mast. It is a special fitting responsible for the mast rake. You can put the mast from four, deg uh, four degree backward to one or two degree forward, like a starboard. So you are much more, much more faster downwind. <coughs> now the great day, launching. The reward of effort on the way to the crane. First contact with the water. First sailing trails, but only with the cruising sails. And now, please, more from you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the boat was launched in 2021. Her name is like the name of her naval architect, Starling Burgess. Connecting, contacting the family, I got permission to give her his proper name. In addition, I was very happy to get in contact with one of his grandsons, Stephen Taylor. He came along to participate in the 8-meter world championship in Geneva last year. He also was present during the christening of the boat, which took place after we won the Sierra Cup with Starling Burgess. The gentleman on the right-hand side is Steve uh, uh, Taylor. It, all in all, you can see here a happy boat owner an old bone, still having passion for these wonderfully elegant, breathtakingly beautiful classic meter yachts, and a strong believer in the unique abilities of that outstanding naval architect, Starling Burgess. 
after having won the Sierra Cup, we went also forward to eliminate a small handicap, namely the wooden mast previously used on Wyvern. Therefore, I am commissioned Juliane Hempel to design a new wooden mast for Starling Birches. This mast actually is being built. Meanwhile, I have said farewell to my boat Starling Birches, making it a gift to my daughter Selina on the occasion of her marriage last year. <laughs> A few words <laughs> to the mass. <laughs> A few short words to the new mast. Of course, it is built with John Lammert's wonderful wood. And every stage is measured in John's laboratory. It's a huge work. He needs, I think, two weeks or more. Here you see the dream team <laughs> in his factory. With all these measures, we make a table for the boat builders to glue the staves for the hollow wooden mast profile. But this would be another big capital. But only two more words about my new wooden mast again. The mast tube is in CNC machined and the fittings 3D printed in aluminium. And we built two masts, but more about that. <laughs> Dear friends, you might be guessing now that I'm in a desperate situation. Luckily, this is not the case. I still own the 8-meter yacht Ayana, and I'm looking forward to participate in the 8-meter World Championship in Genoa, having Juliane and hopefully John Lammertz as capable crew members. On those waters, we will try to compete successfully against Starling Birch. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>